All right, hi everyone. We're here. We're going to look at a D2A474 DeWalt 7 inch angle grinder. I've had this one for uh, about six, seven years. I used to use it for some daily pretty heavy fabrication. I'd already gotten a jump start on taking it apart. Here's the handle. What's interesting is the plastic is quite flimsy when it's not <clears throat> when it's not uh, cased together. So it's interesting. This everything's coated in plastic, uh, and the switch actually seems pretty hefty. There's a nice detent. Um, it doesn't seem to be falling apart. I mean, the design's pretty simple. The cable here, the wire is quite thick. I'm not sure the gauge, but it's quite thick. The plastic on the handle is extremely flimsy when it's not together. Um, okay, here I'm taking the motor assembly apart and the armature and the windings, looking inside the, uh, the case. Um, pretty stout. Seems to be in good shape. Doesn't look burned or cracking. Uh, this this uh, tool would run fine. I just wanted to pull it apart and take a look at it. Interesting here is that the armature windings, <clears throat> there's some string coated in epoxy. I'm not sure if that's how that cage is held together, but it's kind of interesting. Pretty beefy bearings. There's bearings on each end. I think they're the same size diameter. I have a picture later with a, with a uh, measurement. Uh, I'm going to pull the drive assembly out. I believe that's a dampener, that plastic piece on the spindle. Uh, everything, all the attachments you put on back up to that. I, I assume it's some sort of dampener. Uh, I've never re-greased this gun. This is the stock grease that's in it. It's very sticky. Uh, I'd have to do some deeper diving to see what kind of grease type it is, but it's it, it's very sticky and uh, it seems like it's it's holding quite a bit of metallic deposit, you know, shavings from the gears as they've worn in. Uh, this tool is extremely powerful uh, compared to my smaller four and a half inch grinders. And cut off wheels. Uh, I use this for cleaning up big weld jobs. Um, used to do a lot of trailer fabrication. Yeah, so this is the grease type. I cleaned it up and ended up pulling out the armature assembly. Uh, it's held in with, uh, I think, three screws, three machine screws. <clears throat> and then eventually taking the pinion gear out. If that's the right term for that gear, even though it's a helical cut. Um, you see the top there is a bearing uh, that holds the uh, spur gear. All right. Um, I've had no issues with this tool at all. No failures. Uh, you really can't stall it. Um, I bought it because I was I, I needed something that would you know move more metal, take more take more shavings off. Uh, do you know allow for longer run times than the than the smaller uh, grinders I have? Um, uh, coming up after this video, I've actually got three or four tools that are actually broken, and uh, uh, so uh, we're going to be taking those apart to figure out what's wrong with them. So those screws allow this to come out of the uh, of the the nose piece there, <clears throat> and then this spinning gear. I'm going to clean that off. Remove the uh, a cap nut and uh, everything it sits on a uh, sort of a keyway it's not pressure fit like some other tools so I'm gonna clean this off slides right off you see it appears to be the same size bearing um, I believe I've taken a measurement here you see there's a you see uh, the the end of the motor there's a heat sink uh, maybe possibly magnesium uh, as well as a fan for cooling so the tool seems to be built, you know, engineered to handle the kind of abuse you're going to give to it. Um, I'm starting to question some of my purchase of the wall tools uh, after some recent failures, but this tool has held up pretty well. Uh, looks like a inch and a quarter diameter, outside diameter bearing. Uh, bearing is in great shape, no slop, no, no crunchies in there. See a rough measurement of the uh, armature and, and the motor winding. Be interested in if anyone knows why they wrap that string at the other end in epoxy. I assume the string is used to affix that cage, and they just dab it with epoxy to hold it, make sure it doesn't come loose. I stopped here. I didn't want to pull this bearing off. It looks like it's press fit. Uh, we're going to take a look at some of the brushes. There's two brushes. <clears throat> Each side has a door. There's a paint key. 
which uh, actually is coming in handy here. So you pull the doors off and they allow you direct access to the brushes. This everything here looks pretty looks pretty hefty. Um, the, the springs there are quite heavy and the brushes are actually quite thick uh, and they're in great shape for uh, for whatever time I've put on them, which isn't a whole lot, but they're they're in quite good shape, and I just reuse them. So this is the end of the teardown. Uh, after this, I put it back together. It goes back to it went, this one went back together very easily. I don't have video of that. I try to keep these close to five minutes. This one was over that. Um, so if you got this too, if you're looking at buying it, uh, probably look to buy it used. I would say. There's not a whole lot that can break on it, I think. The switches, probably. The brushes. Uh, the bearings. But all that stuff is really easy to get to. And the thing has got a tremendous amount of power. I mean, I can reef on it all day. And, and I'm a pretty big fellow. And it's... Yeah, you see the size of the brush there. And I have pretty big fingers. So, <clears throat> All right, so this is... I got it back together. And I'm just going to show that it runs. And hit this... Uh, uh, looks like one-inch angle. Or half-inch. Three quarter. And I was with the uh, fisheye lens on the GoPro. This I can tell. But anyway, it's working. Uh, this works great. It'll go back in the box. I don't use this tool a whole lot nowadays. I don't do a lot of metal fabrication anymore. But I uh, hope you enjoyed that. Don't let your meat loaf. Take care, guys.